B'siyat HaDishmai, we're going to learn Psochim Daf Mem Aleph. We're going to start from the Mishnah, 14 lines from the bottom of Daf Mem Omad Beis. Says the Mishnah, Ein noisnin kemach letoich charoises. Charoises, which was a mixture of different ingredients, often used on Seder night. We're going to learn about that later on in the Masechta. And one of the ingredients in the charoises happens to be vinegar, which made it sharp. One should not put flour into charoises. Oil toich nor should one put flour into mustard. Again, these are sharp ingredients, and they will make the flour become chomet quickly. Ve'im nosan. And if you did put the flour into either, well, we'll soon see in the Gemara, but it seems that if you put the flour into either charoises or the chardal, yoichal miyad, then he should eat them immediately before it can become chomets. For Reb Meir says, no, you're not allowed to eat it. There's a chance it's already become chomets. And we'll see in the Gemara, he says, you have to burn it. Now, whether the imnosan yoichal miyad, if when the chachomim say you are allowed to eat it, whether that goes also on charoises or just on charadal is a discussion we're going to have in the Gemara. Continues the Mishnah. Ein mevashlin es pesach one's not allowed to cook the korban Pesach. Loi mashkin v'loi peris not with any liquids or fruit juices. Aval sochin, but whilst, once, whilst one was roasting the korban Pesach, then one was allowed to smear some other liquid on it. Umat bilin oisoi, and whilst eating the korban Pesach, one, one was allowed to dip it, bohen, into these different types of, of liquids. Continues the Mishnah. Mei tashmisha ishal nachtim, the bakers, and especially those that were making matzahs and didn't want their hands to get too warm, they would dip their hands into a vessel of cold water in order to keep their hands cool. And that water, Yishavchoy, should be spilt out and should not be consumed in any way, because they can become chomets. We'll see more about this in the Gemara. Says the Gemara, Omar of Kahana, Machlekes, the Machlekes we saw in the Mishnah, between the Tanakama and Rameah, if somebody did put flour into charoises or chardal, everybody agrees one should not put flour into charoises or into chardal. The charoises has vinegar, the chardal is mustard, is sharp in its own right. The question is, there was a machlekas then in the Mishnah, if somebody did put the water, the, the flour into these ingredients, is one allowed to eat it or not? The Tanakhama say, Yoichal miyad, eat it immediately. Reb Meir says, it's also. So if Kahana says the whole machlekas is only regarding chardal, is only regarding mustard, that indeed it is sharp and it could make the chomet quite quickly, and therefore those machlekas and the chachomim say, eat it straight away, Reb Meir says no. But if you put it into charoises, where there's vinegar, according to everybody, even according to the Tanakama, you have to burn it immediately because it's, you're not allowed to eat it. It may have become chomets already. It's about to become chomets and you're not allowed to eat it. That was Rav Kahana's opinion. Tani na mihochi, in the Brisa we saw this as well. Ein nois nin kemach letoicha charoises. One's not al- allowed to put flour into charoises. Ve'im nos hanin if one did, yisarif miyad. And there's no machlekas here. Everybody says if you put flour into charoises, you have to burn it immediately. Letoicha charadol. If you put water into mustard, here's the machlekas. Reb Meir Oymer Yisarif Miyad. Reb Meir says that you burn it straight away, as we saw in our Mishnah. The Chachomim Oymer Yichal Miyad, and the Chachomim say you eat it immediately. So we have a brisa saying the same thing as Rav Kahana. Continues the Gemara. Omer of Huna Breder of Yehuda. Omer of Nachman. Omer Shmuel. It was said in the name of Shmuel. Halacha Kedivrei Chachomim. The halacha is like the chachomim. There was a machlekas chachomim and Reb Meir where the ones allowed to eat this sharp food item that flour had been put into. That the chachomim say yoichal miyad, you can eat it. That's the halacha. Amalei Rav Nachman by Yitzchok Rav Huna Breder of Yehuda. Rav Nachman by Yitzchok asked Rav Huna Breder of Yehuda that you said in the name of Rav Nachman in the main name of Shmuel the halacha is like the chachomim and one is allowed to eat it straight away. Acharoisus Omar, we use. What was, was, what was said in the name of Shmuel, was it said also regarding Charesis, that even there there was a Machlekes, Reb Meir and the Chachomim, and according to the Chachomim you're allowed to 
eat the charesis even if you put flour in. And that's what Shmuel said, the halacha was like the chachomim there. A charesis ko'omar mar, and that would be not like Rav Kahana. Or achardul ko'omar mar. Or did you only say regarding the mustard? Only regarding the mustard, there was a machleikas, like Rav Kahana said. And in that case, the halacha is like the chachomim. Omar le, lemay nafkimina. So, so Rav Huna Brady of Yehuda said to Rav Nachman by Yitzchok, what's the difference? What's the halachic difference whether I say I hold like Rav Kahana or I don't say like Rav Kahana? Or more accurately, what's the halachic difference if what I said was by charesis or if I said it with chardal? So as it says the Gemara, he answered him, Le Rav Kahana. The, the question is going to be, uh, the halacha that Rav Kahana said, that Rav Kahana said, that if you only said it on chardal, then regarding charesis, even the Chachomim say, that you have to, that you have to burn it straight away. If you don't hold like of like of Rav Kahana, then in the case of Chardal, then even in the case of Charesis, then according to the Chachomim, you would be allowed to eat it, even though you've put in flour. Domer of Kahana, Machleikas letoicha Chardal, Lava letoicha Charesis, Diver Hakeli, Sarif Miyad. The difference is going to be: Are you arguing with Rav Kahana, or are you not arguing with Rav Kahana? Omer Lei. So he answered him back, I didn't hear of what Rav Kahana said, and you know what that means? I don't hold of what Rav Kahana said. And even though we saw a brysa like Rav Kahana, the, this, this, this opinion, this Shmuel, obviously holds that our Mishnah, that doesn't seem to say like Rav Kahana, because our Mishnah doesn't make that differentiation. Our Mishnah just says, and then brings the Machleikas, and doesn't say the Machleikas is only regarding Chardal. Rav Kahana says that that's what he means, and brought a Brisa to himself. But there's a good chance that the Mishnah doesn't agree with that, and therefore, least severely, I don't hold of what Rav Kahana says, and according to the Chachomim, one is allowed to eat even the charesis, if after flour was put into it. That's how Tesis explains this. Omer Rav Ashi, Kavaseder of Kahana Mistabra. Rav Ashi actually says that it's probable like Rav Kahana. Mid Omer Shmuel, Ein Alocha Kribyesi. We saw already previously in the Gemara that the Machlekes and Rav Yesi holds that if you have grains that have become swollen from water and have not yet become chomets, Rabbi Yossi says you can put them in, either you put vinegar onto them or you put them into vinegar and that will make them contract and not become chomets. And Shmuel said that loch is not like Rabbi Yossi, and you cannot rely on, on vinegar to be able to stop the fermentation, to stop it becoming chomets. My love, so if Shmuel said that Locha was not like Rav Yaisi, that means that it's, vinegar has the same qualities as water. That Tzimuse Hudulayt Tzomis, it also does not make the, the grains contract and stop becoming chomets. And it's also like water, that like water makes flour ferment, so too vinegar will make the flour ferment. And since vinegar makes flour ferment, then it makes sense what Rav Kahana said, that in the case of charesis, where there's vinegar in it, in that case, even the Chachomim will agree that it's probably chomets, or it's very likely to be chomets, and quickly become chomets, and one's not allowed to eat it. So as the Gemara Loi, you cannot bring proof from that Shmuel, that Shmuel here, held like Rav Kahana? No, because it could be Dilma, maybe Shmuel holds that vinegar is not exactly like water, and vinegar doesn't very quickly, or doesn't make something ferment and become chomets. Dilma loy mitz mastzomis. Shmuel only said that vinegar does not have that property of making the grains contract and stopping them becoming chomets. V'loy chamu But maybe it's not like water that actually makes the flour ferment and become chomets. And therefore, it could be that Shmuel holds not like Rav Kahana, and even in the case of, even in the case of charesis, you're allowed to eat the charesis if you put water into it, even if you put flour into it. Continues the Gemara. Ein mevashlin v'chulu. We saw in the next part of the Mishnah, the Mishnah says, Ein mevashlin es pesach one's not allowed to cook the korban pesach, loy b'mashkin v'loy b'meipere, it's not in fruit juices or any other liquids, etc. And what does it actually say in the Torah? The Torah says, there's one posuk that says in the, in the posuk, in the Torah, 
ואוכלו את הבוסור בלילה הזה, you should eat the flesh, the meat of the קורבן פסח, that night, the night to the 15th, צלי אש, roasted on fire, ומצת על מרר מיכלו. There's another פוסוק that says, אל תאכלו ממנו נו. Do not eat the קורבן פסח נו, which is just partially roasted. ובושל מבושל במים, nor should you eat the קורבן פסח when it's cooked in water. כי אם צלי אש, Rather, you only eat the Korban Pesach when it is roasted with fire. Reishel Krov Val Kirboi. So the Gemara now says as follows. Tonu Rabbonon. Bamayim, the Pasuk says that you're not allowed to cook the Korban Pesach. Uvashel Mavushel Bamayim. You're not allowed to cook it in water. Ein Yelo Bamayim, if you just read the Chumash, all you know is you're not allowed to cook the Korban Pesach with water. Shar Mashkin Minayin, other liquids, how do you know that the same Isser applies? Says the Gemara, Omr is Kalva Chaymer. We make a Kalva Chaymer. Uma Mayim, if with water, She'ein Mafigin Tamon, that there's no taste that the water takes out of the Korban Pesach, nor is there any taste that the water puts into the Korban Pesach. There's different Mepharashim how to explain the word Mafigin Tamon, but that's what, that's what it means. They all agree that the water is not influencing the taste of the Korban Pesach. And nonetheless, Asurin, one's not allowed to cook the Korban Pesach with, in water, Shar Mashkin, but other fruit juices, or any other juices, Shemafigin Tamon, that the taste of those juices affects the taste of the Korban Pesach, Loikolchkin, of course it should be Asur. So we learn out from a Kolchkin. Rebbe Oimer, Rebbe says, Bamayim, from the fact that the Posuk says that you're not allowed to cook the Korban Pesach in water, Eini Elomayim, I only know that to be true for water, Shar Mashkin Minayin. How do I know that you're not allowed to cook the Korban Pesach and other liquids as well? Talmud Loimar, Rebbe says, I learn it out from the double Loshen, Uvoshil, Mavushil. The Posuk could have said, Al Teichlu Mimenu No, Umavushil Bamayim. Don't eat it semi roasted and don't cook it in water. Why does it say Uvoshil Mavushil, a double, a double term? So we see from there, Mikol Mokim, any type of Bishal, not only water. My Binayu, what's the difference between the Tanakama and Rebbe if the sauce that you're not allowed to cook in other juices is because it's from the Kalvachoimer, that other juices, they take away the taste of the water. They take away the taste of the Korban Pesach, so it should be even worse than water, or whether you learn out like Rebbe that you're not allowed to cook it in anything. It says the Gemara, Ika Binayu, Tzli Kador, that... Tzli kador is something that is roasted in a pot, which means it's not roasted just hanging over the fire, it's in a pot, and there's no water there, and there's no other juices there, but the juices of the Korban Pesach itself ooze out of the Korban Pesach, and then so, sort of the, kor, the meat of the Korban Pesach is being cooked in its own juices. So if you learn out from a Kalvo Chaymet, then in the case where you don't have water and you don't have any other juices whose taste are going to influence the taste of the Korban Pesach, all you have is the Korban Pesach in its own juices, it would be mutter. However, according to Rebbe, who says that, that, that we learn it out from uvoshel mavoshel, any type of bishel is osr, then even cooking it in its own juices will also be osr. Asks the Gemara of Rabbon on Hai Uvashil Mavushil Mai Ovdilu. So the Re- Rebbe learns from the double Loshen, Uvashil Mavushil, that any other liquids you're not allowed to cook the Korban Pesach in. But the Chachomim who learned that halacha from a Kalva what do they do with this double Loshen? Answers the Gemara, Mi Boyli Lekedetanya, they need it for the, to learn out the following halacha. Bishlu Vachar Kach Tzolui, Oi Tzolui Vachar Kach Bishlui, Chayev. There's a chi of malchus. If you either first cook the korban pesach and then you roast it, or you first roast it and then you cook it. And where do we know that halacha from? We know these halachas from the uvoshel mavoshel, that it doesn't matter when you cooked it, whenever you cooked it, you're chayev. Says the Gemara Bishlei, Mabishlei v'achar kach tzoloi chayev. I can understand why if somebody first cooked the Korban Pesach and then roasted it, it should be chayev. Doha Bishlei, because cooking something before being roasted has the status of being cooked. And the Pasuk says, 
that uvoshel muvoshel that you you're not allowed to eat a korban pesach that's being cooked. Elot zoloi vachar kach bishloi. But if you cook it after you've roasted it, hotsli eshu, it doesn't have the status of being cooked. When you cook something after it's been roasted or baked, for that matter, it's not called cooked. It's only called roasted or baked. So Amai, why should he be chayiv? This is not called cooking. So you, it's very good you have a double term of voshel mavoshel, but that's on condition that it's called cooked. And this is not called cooked. Answers the Gemara, Omer of Kahan, no homani Rabbi This is the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi, who says that even after baking, it's possible for something to have the status of cooked. Titania we learned in a brisa. Yaitzin, one can be Yaitzah, the mitzvah of matzah, berakik, which is a wafer, a matzah, hashorui, that's been soaked, ubamavushal, or it's been cooked, shaloni muach, as long as it hasn't been totally dissolved in the water, you can be Yaitzah, the mitzvah of matzah, that way, divri reb mea, that's the opinion of reb mea. Reb Yaisi oimir, reb Yaisi argues and says, no, Yaitzin berakik hashorui, if you soak the matzah in water, then that's okay. If you cook the matzah in water, you're not yaitzah. Even if it did not get dissolved. And obviously Rabbi Yaisi holds that since you've cooked it, it's not, it's, it's not called baked, it's called cooked. And you cannot be yaitzah with the cooked matzah. However, Rabbi Meir says it's not called cooked. Even if you cooked it, since it was baked before that, it, the status of the matzah is baked, not cooked. And therefore, Rabbi Meir says you can be yaitzah. Rabbi Yossi says that cooking after baking is called bishel. So to hear, cooking after roasting is called cooking, and therefore is chayev. Ullu Omar Ullu says, no, afilu temer Rabbi Meir, that our brisa that says that you chayev if you eat from the korban Pesach that was cooked after it was roasted, could even be according to Rabbi Meir. Even though Rabbi Meir says that if you cook a matzah, you can be yaitzah the mitzvah of matzah. It's not considered cooked. Nonetheless, over here, with Korban Pesach, is different. Shani hocha do amakro, uvoshil mevushil mikol mokim. It says uvoshil mevushil any which way that it's cooked, even though the halachically may not have the same status regarding um, making a matzah not be able to be used for the mitzvah of matzah, but and because it's cooking after being baked doesn't make the matzah called cooked. Nonetheless, you're doing a process of cooking. And with Korban Pesach, we learn out from the extra word, Uvashel Mavoshel, any process of cooking is also. It's going to be chayiv if you eat it. Tonu Rabbonon. Yochel Tzoloi Kol Tzorkon. What happens if somebody, he roasted it, Kol Tzorkon, which means all the way till the end. And the Gemara is going to say that it, it was, it's almost burnt. It's, it's charred. Yochel Tzoloi Kol Tzorkoi Yehi Chayev. I may have thought that he's going to be chayev if he eat that, because this is not called roasted on fire, this is called toasted on fire, Rashi says. It's called kli'esh, the sorrow and burnt. This is not roasted, it's toasted or burnt, and therefore you'll be chayev if you eat it, like you're chayev for eating korm pesach, which has been processed in any way other than roasting. Talmud Leiman, no. It says in the Pasuk, al toichlu mimenu no. You're not allowed to eat korm pesach if it's partially co- roasted. Uvashel mevushel b'mayim, nor are you allowed to eat the korban pesach that was cooked in water. No, uvashel mevushel amarti lecho. The Torah only says it's osa, or yuchayv, if you eat a korban pesach that was either semi-roasted, partially roasted, or cooked. V'loyshe tzoli kol tzorkoi. But if you, if you roasted it to the point that it's kol tzorkoi, it's charred, that the pasuk doesn't say is osa. Says the Gemara, hey, Chodomi, what, what's, what's, what's the situation of Tzoloi Kol Tzorkoi? We know that Tzliya is roasting and you're supposed to roast the Korban Pesach. What does the Korban Pesach look like that's been Tzoloi? It's called Tzliya, but it's Kol Tzorkoi. Omer Vashi, the Shavya Charucha, where it's rendered as charred, and since it's considered charred, that is called Tzoloi Kol Tzorkoi that we thought maybe it's not called Tzliyesh, it's called uh, toasted and something else. No, the Gemara says, the Brisa says, we learn from here that only no uvoshel mevoshel is a problem, but if it's been roasted, even if it's been over roasted, it's still, you're not chayev. Continues the Gemara Tonura Bonon. Yochil ochal kazais chay yehi chayev. Now, what happens if you eat the korban pesach raw? 
it hasn't been roasted, but it also hasn't been cooked, and it's not gra- partially roasted. It's not not. It's not voshel mevushel bamaim. It's just raw. I would have thought you chayev. Why would we have thought you chayev? Because there's a mitzvah. Not only are you not allowed to eat it partially roasted or cooked, there's actually a mitzvah. You have to eat it only when it's roasted. And as it says in the Pasuk, V'ochlu es abosa balaylo azeh tzli eish. You have to eat it on the night of the 15th when it's roasted in fire. I may have thought you're going to be chayev. Talmud Lema says in the Pasuk, no. Al toichlu mimenu no uvoshel mevoshel. That the only time where you're going to be chayev is if you either ate it no, which is partially roasted, uvoshel, or if you cooked it. Omar tilcho, that's where you have the, the lav. V'loi chay. But if you ate it raw, then you're not going to be chayev. You're going to ask me a question that the Pasuk says that you're only allowed to eat it roasted. And anything that's not roasted should be included in the Issa of eating it. Where the Pasuk says only eat it roasted in, in, in fire. So the answer is that this opinion holds that since the words kiim tzliesh excludes anything that's not roasted in fire, that's called a lav shebeklolus. It's a lav, it's an issa, it's telling you what you're not allowed to do, but it's not singling out, it's not specifying don't do this specifically, it's just saying anything that's not roasting on fire is osa, and since it's not specified, it's called a lav shebeklolus, and this opinion holds that the ain loikin alav should be clawless. You don't get malchus. It's also you're not allowed to eat it raw. There's a mitzvah to eat it roasted, but since it's a lav should be clawless, you don't get malchus. Yochel yehi mutter. I may have thought that it's actually mutter to eat the carbon pesach raw. Talmud leimar ki im tzliesh. No, as we said a moment ago, the pasuk says it's a lav shabaklolus. You won't get malchus for it. But the pasuk does say the only way you're allowed to eat the korban pesach is if it's been roasted on fire. Anything else is osur, including eating it raw. Asks the Gemara, heichen domi no. We've been discussing this concept called no, which I've translated as gradually roasted. What's the definition of gradually roasted? Omar Rav, Rav says, Omri Parasoi, it's the stage of the roasting that the Persians call it Avarnim. That stage is called, no, it's called only partially roasted. Continues the Gemara. Omar of Chizda, Hamavashil Bechamei Tveria. If somebody cooks on Shabbos now, we're moving over to the halachas of Shabbos. We know that one of the Lamates Malachas on Shabbos is not to cook. So if somebody cooks on the fire, that's called Bishel on Shabbos. What happens if he doesn't cook on the fire? He cooks in a hot spring. Hamavashel b'chamei tveria b'shabbos. If somebody cooks in a hot spring on Shabbos, potter is going to be potter. He's not allowed to do it, but it's, he's potter. Because that's not the normal way of cooking. Pesach shabishloi b'chamei tveria. What happens if you cook a korban Pesach on a hot spring, with, with a hot spring? Chayev. Then it's called cooking. And you're going to it, and you're going to be chayev because we know that a korban pesach is a korban pesach is not allowed to be cooked. And now the Gemara is going to discuss this. Rav Chizda just gave a statement, and we'll soon see that it's almost a contradiction. That on the one hand, cooking in hot springs on Shabbos is not considered cooking, but on korban pesach he's going to be chayev. Asks the Gemara, "Why is not Shabbos deloy? Why, if somebody who cooks in a hot spring on Shabbos is he not chayev? The toil dois eish inon because it's only called bishul if you're cooking on something which is consequent to fire. Veleka and here it's a hot spring. It's not being heated up with fire." Asks the Gemara, "Pesach nami lav toil dois eishu." If so, regarding carbon Pesach, the same hot springs which are not toil dois eish, they're not consequent to fire. The, um, by, on Shabbos, the same as Pesach, so it's not called Bishel. If it's not called Bishel, why is he Chayev? Oh, my Rava, Rava says as follows, My Chayev, Diktoni, this that Rav Chizda said, you're Chayev, if you cook the carbon Pesach in the hot springs, it's not because of Uvoshel Mavoshel Bamaim, because it's not considered Bishel. The Ka'ova Mishum Tzli'eish, going back to what we said before, the Pasuk says that besides for the explicit and the, the explicit Issa of eating it, no, which is 
partially roasted, or vashel and vashel b'mayim, or cooked, it says ki im tzliesh, you're only allowed to eat it if it's roasted, on roasted on fire. So the pasuk that says you're, it has to be roasted on fire explicitly excludes anything that's not roasted on fire, even though it's not specific what processes are included in that. We had before the chai, raw, is included in, ki, in the is of kiem tzliesh. Now we have um, chami tveria with hot springs. And so you're going to say, how can you say chayev? We just saw before that if you eat it raw, you're not chayev. And we explained the reason you're not chayev is because the Issa that's learnt, that's deduced from kiem tzliesh, don't eat the korm pesach in any other way other than roasted on fire, is a lav shabaklolis. It's just a generalized lav, and such a lav cannot give you malchus. Over here, this opinion holds, according to Robert's explanation, of Chizda holds that lav shabaklolis, you do get malchus. And therefore, if you cook it on the chamei tveria, you're not chayev because of uvoshel mevoshel bamaim. Indeed, it's not called bishel, but you will be chayev because you've transgressed eating the korban Pesach in anything other than tzliesh, and you're chayev even for lav shabaklolis. Rav Chia Bereder of Nosen Masni Lola Hodor of Chizda Behedya he learned this that Rav Chizda says, he learned it explicitly, um, that Rav Chizda explicitly said that the reason that by Korban Pesach Yochayev is not because of Bishel, but because it's not Tzliesh. Om Rav Chizda, HaMavashel B'chamit Veriyah B'Shabbos Potur, as we saw before. U Pesach Shabishli B'chamit Veriyah Chayev, as we saw before. But over here, we have, according to Rav Chia Bereder of Nosen, he learned this quote of Rav Chizda when he had an extra few words. She'ovar mishum tzli'eish. That Rav Chizda himself explained the reason that if you cook a korban Pesach in the hot springs, that Yochayev is not because of Bishel, but because it was not eaten tzli'eish. Continues the Gemara. Omar Rava. Ochloi no. If somebody ate the korban Pesach when it was no, it was only partially roasted, loika time, he's going to get Malchus twice, because he did two Averis. Which two Averis did he get? One Avera, the Torah says, don't eat the korban Pesach, semi-roasted, partially roasted. But the Torah also said, only eat the korban Pesach when it's tzli'esh, when it's roasted on fire, properly roasted. And we said that that lav excludes eating it in any way which is not tzli'esh. So that's two Averis. It's two times that the Pasuk says, don't eat it partially roasted. So you get twice Malchus. Muvushal, if you ate the korban Pesach cooked, like time, you'll also be chayev too. You're going to be chayev once for eating the korban Pesach, having transgressed uvoshel muvushal bamaim, and the second time having transgressed the part of the Pasuk that says, ki im tzliesh. No umuvushal, if you cooked the korban Pesach and you partially roasted it, so you have now, uh, you've transgressed both issues, and you've transgressed the the Issa of eating the Korban Pesach, not in the state of Tzli'esh, you have three, Loika Sholish. That was the opinion of Rava, Abaya Omar. Abaya says, Ein Loika da Lav Shabaklolos. As we said before, we had such an opinion that a Lav Shabaklolos, a generalized Lav, in this case, Ki Im Tzli'esh, where the Torah says, don't eat it in any way other than roasted on fire, you don't get Malchus. Now, in Abaya, there's two ways of understanding that. Does that mean you don't get Malchus when you have another love? For example, No, where we said you have the Issa of No, and you have the Issa of Kiem Tzliesh. So Rav says you have two, and Abaya will say no. You only have one. You're not going to be Chayev on Lav Shebeklolos if you have a regular Lav. But what happens if you don't have a regular Lav? What happens if it wasn't No, and it wasn't Muvushal? For example, he cooked it in the hot springs. Uh, he cooked the Korban Pesach in hot springs. It's not no, it's not Mavushal, as we saw before. So maybe there, Abai will agree that since I don't have an explicit lav, you will get Malchus from the generalized lav. And that's going to be two opinions in the Gemara. Ikeda Omra, some say, Tarti Hudulei Loki, you won't be get Malchus twice also for a, an explicit lav and also for a generalized lav, chodomi holoki. However, in the event that the only lav you have is the generalized lav, for example, the hot springs, then you will get malchus. Ikadomra, others say no, chodonami, even in the case where the only lav that would be applicable is the generalized one, loyloki, you will not get malchus, to loymi yachid, 
lave because the lav that we're talking about is not a specific lav and where the Torah says that if you transgress a lav you chive malchus immediately afterwards the Torah says that whilst an animal is thrashing you're not allowed to muzzle the mouth of the animal. And the Gemara elsewhere asks, why does the Torah explicitly write next to the next to this din that somebody who transgresses a lav gets malchus? Why does the Torah write chasima, the halacha of muzzling an animal, to teach us that you only ever chayv malchus when it's similar to the lav of chasima? of muzzling. And in the same way as by chasimo, it says explicitly the lav, it's not a generalized lav, so too, according to this opinion, you will never get malchus on a generalized lav. Deloy miyached lave kelav de chasimo, because a generalized lav is not a specific lav, and therefore is not similar to the lav of muzzling an animal, and therefore you're not going to be chayev. That was two opinions in Abaya. And a similar thing we're now going to find in another instant. Rava Omar. What happens, we know that a Nazir is not allowed to drink, is not allowed to consume anything that comes from grapes. Not the grapes, not the juice of the grapes, not the seeds of the grapes, not the, not the, the, the peels of the grapes, and not the leaves of the vine. All that is also for a Nazir. And let's read the Pasuk inside. The Pasuk writes in Parshas Nosoi, Kol yumei Nizroi, all the days of the Nazirus, mikoil asheye oser, anything that's made or that comes from migefen hayayin, from a grapevine, mecharatzanim v'adzog, from the pips to the skins, lo yoichil, the Nazir is not allowed to eat it. That's what it says in the Pasuk. So we also have here a general love where it says, Anything that comes from the gra- from the from the grapevine, and then the pasuk singles out and specifies mecharatzanim v'adzog from the pips from the seeds to the skins. Says Rava, Rava Omar, Ochal zog. If somebody ate the zog, the skins of the of the grapes, Loikash time is going to be chayev twice. Rava says, Loikin alav shabal klalus, as we saw before, and therefore you've got also he ate zog, and also he ate something that was, that came from, from the, from a grapevine. Charutzon, if he ate the seeds, Loikash time is going to be chayev too, twice. Zog ver charutzon, if he ate also zog, also charutzon, Loikash shalish, he'll be chayev for three, he'll be chayev for mikoila she yaose migefe nayayin, He's going to be chayev for charatzanim, mi charatzanim, and chayev for va'ad zog. Abaya Oma, no. Abaya says, ain loikin alav she beklolos, that you don't get malchus for a generalized love. And here too, we have the two opinions, the two versions in Abaya. Ikad omra tarati hu loki. Abaya only holds that you don't get malchus for lav she beklolos in the presence of a specific love. For example, if you ate either charatzanim or zog, chodom mihas loki. But according to this opinion, in the event that the only love he has transgressed is the generalized one, for example, eats from the leaves of the of the vine. That's not charzanim. It's not zog. The only thing he's transgressed is mikoila sheyose migef and ayain. Maybe he'll be chayev, even though it's a generalized lav. It's lav shebeklolus. It could amra others say no. You won't even get Malchus if the only one that he would get Malchus for is the generalized Lav. You never get Malchus and Lav Shabaklolus. Because it's not a specific Lav. Like the explicit Lav that's written by the Issa of muzzling an animal whilst threshing, which is specified in the Pasuk immediately after the parasha that teaches us about Malchus. Continues the Gemara. Tonu Rabbonon. Ochal Kazayis no. Now we're going to discuss when the Issa applies of eating no. When the Posuk says that if you eat, it's an Avera to eat the carbon Pesach when it's only partially roasted. The question is, when is that true? Is that true even if you eat the carbon Pesach on the 14th? Because we know the carbon Pesach was shechted on the 14th of Nisan in the afternoon. And then it was roasted, and in the evening, on the night of the 15th, there's a mitzvah that says, that you, eat the, you have to eat the Karm Pesach in the night of the 15th. You have to eat it, you have to eat it roasted. 
The question is, when will you get Malkus for eating an, the Korban Pesach when it's not, when it's only semi-roasted? Is it only on the 14th, only on the 15th, both maybe? Let's have a look. If you ate a kazais of the Korban Pesach when it was in a no state, it was only partially roasted, but you didn't eat it that way on the 15th, you ate it on the 14th, Potter will soon see why, but you're not going to get Malkus. If you eat a kazais of the Korban Pesach in a no state in the night of the 15th, that's when you're going to be Chayev. Ochal kazayis tzli, this is another loch in the same b'risa. Ochal kazayis tzli mi We know that you're only allowed to eat the korban Pesach tzli, and we know that you have to eat it tzli on the night of the 15th. And later in the Gemara we're going to learn that it's an avera, it's also to eat the korban Pesach roasted tzli on the 14th. So, so since eating tzli on the 14th is is contrary to the to the rules of Korban Pesach, so the Brisa says, if somebody did eat a kazayis of the Korban Pesach tzli mib oidyoim, loy posal atzmei mibnei chabura. We know there's a halacha, that every person has to be part of a, of a group. He has to be a member of a group that's been pre, pre, the list has been made even before the Korban Pesach was made. Then we knew exactly who was going to be part of the group that was going to eat this Korban Pesach. And within one group, they could split up. But once, wherever you ate the Korban Pesach, the first Kazais, you're not allowed to, even within the same group, you're not allowed to eat the Korban Pesach elsewhere, in another place. The question is, if I ate Korban Pesach in the day of the 15th, which is too, uh, in the day of the 14th, sorry, which is too early, you're not supposed to eat Korban Pesach in the day of the 14th, does that mean I cannot eat it again in the 15th at night because it's a different place? Says the Brysa, no. He's not disqualified himself from eating with his group on the night of the 15th. Kazais sleep, Mishachashecha. However, if he eats a kazais of the Korban Pesach that was roasted, seems that nothing's wrong. But once you've eaten after it's ready nightfall, after it's the 15th, you've eaten a kazais of tzli, posal atzmei b'mlei chabura, you're no longer allowed to eat from this Korban Pesach in any other place, even if it's within your group. Tanya Idoch, we learned another brisa. Yochel, I may have thought that Ochal Kazais no Miboidyoim, if you eat Korban Pesach in the day of the 14th, Yehi Chayev, you'll be Chayev, and the Issa that says in the Posok of Al Toichlu Mimenu no also applies on the day of the 14th. And the, and the reasoning behind that would be the dinhu. There's a logic behind it. If in the night of the 15th, where there's a mitzvah to eat the korban roasted, the pasuk says, don't eat it if it's just partially roasted, then in the day where there's no mitzvah whatsoever to eat the korban Pesach roasted, then of course you're not allowed to eat it when it's just semi-roasted, when it's semi-roasted. That's what, that would be the logic to this, to this halacha. It's a yochil, we're soon going to refute it. But th- there is a logic to this understanding that you'll be chayev for no also in the night of the 15th and also in the day of the 14th. Oi, loi, maybe there's another Another set of halachas that we could learn, different, that what? That, b'shor she'enoi b'kumachil tzli, yeshnoi b'bal toichal no. You're only going to, the only avera, you're only going to get malchus for eating no, is in a time where there's no mitzvah to eat a roasted korban pesach. But b'shor she'yeshnoi b'kumachil tzli, but the night of the 15th, where there's a mitzvah to eat the animal tzli, e'enoi b'bal toichal no. Then the, you will not get malchus, you do, there's no avera of eating the korban pesach semi-roasted. The Altitama, and don't wonder about this, that how can it be that on the day of the 14th, if you eat it, no, Yochayev, where did that Issa disappear to at the night of the 15th? Says the Gemara, no, don't wonder about that. Shari Hutur Michloloi eats it sleep, because the, there's an Avera to eat the Korban Pesach roasted in the, on the day of the 14th. It says in the Pasuk, For Ochlo is Abosa Balailo Azet Tzli. Is you only allowed to eat the Tzli in the night, not in the day? What happened to that Issa when it came to the night? It vanished. 
but it's only also in the day. It's the same might apply with no, that you're only going to be also if you eat it in the day, and that night that isa is going to disappear. Talmud Loima says the Brisa, no, the halacha is not like the first site, the first option that we had, that you chayev for no if you eat it on the 14th or the 15th. And not like the second understanding that you chayev on the 14th and not chayev on the 15th. Rather, we learn out from the Pasuk Talmud Loimar, al toichlu mimenu no, uvoshel mavushel bamayim kiim tzliesh, that the Torah puts together the isa of eating no, together with the requirement of eating it, tzli'esh. She'ein Talmud Leimar, ki'im tzli'esh. I don't need the words of ki'im tzli'esh, this generalized condition, only korm Pesach in its roasted state. I don't need that. We already says in another posuk, v'ochres aboso balaylo azeh tzli'esh. Uma Talmud Leimar, ki'im tzli'esh. What's the posuk coming to teach us? Ki'im tzli'esh. Leimar lechot to teach us that b'shor she'yeshni b'kumachil tzli, the only time that you're going to be chayev for eating a korban Pesach no is at the time where you're required to eat it when it's roasted. And that's in the night of the 15th. But on the day of the 14th, where there's no mitzvah, you're not allowed to eat the korban Pesach roasted. You're not included in the Issa of eating the korban Pesach when it's semi-roasted. Continues the Brisa, Rebbe Oimer, Ekra Ano, Boshil. The Pasuk could have said, Uboshil, al toichlu menu no, Uboshil bamaim. Ma Talmud leima muvushil. Why do I need the added word, Uboshil muvushil? Sheyochil, I may have thought, Eini elo shebishle mishecha sheicho. That I may have thought that you only chayev if you cooked it after, after it's the night of the 15th. But bishle mi boidyoim. But if you cooked the Korban Pesach when it was Still the 14th Minayan, how do you know that that's also? Talmud Leimah, that's why I have an extra word, uvoshel, mavoshel, any time you cook it, mikol mochim, any time you cook it, it's also. Ask the Gemara, v'hai uvoshel, mavoshel, afke rebi, litzli kador, u l'shar mashkin. We saw on daf, memalef o medalef, we saw earlier on, that Rebbe says, I need uvoshel, mavoshel to teach us, that even if you cook it in something that's not water and not other juices, but in its own juices, that it's also also. So how can you say now that you learn from Mavoshel Mavoshel, even if you cook it on the day of the 14th? Answers the Gemara, Imkein le mekra, oi boshel voshel, oi mavoshel mavoshel. Because we have two issues here. Number one, we have the double term. I don't need it to say a double lotion. You could have just said it once. And now that you have a double lotion, why is it a different lotion? Uvoshil, mevushil. Say two the same. So you can learn out two things from here. One, bishul bikli kador, tzli kador. And the other one, that even if it was nizbashil on the day of the 14th. My voshil mevushil, shomen is minotarity. We can learn from here two things. Continues the Gemara. Tonu Rabbonon. Ochel tzli mib oidyoim. If you ate the korban Pesach roasted, that was fine. But you ate it in the day of the 14th, not the night of the 15th. Chayev is going to be chayev. Kezayis no mishecha sheicha. If you eat a kezayis of no in the night of the 15th, as we've seen in two brises already, you're also going to be chayev. And now the Gemara is saying, from the fact that the brisa put these two alochas together, eat the the chiyuv of eating korban pesach tzli in the day, and the chiyuv of eating no at night, ktoni tzli dumyo dano. There's something similar, there must be some similarity between the roasting and the no, which is partially roasted. Ma no belav, in the same way as if you eat it no, there's a lav in the posuk that says, al toichlu mimenu no, then so too, af tzli belav, if you eat it, if you eat tzli in the day, you're also going to be chiyayv alav and you're going to get malchus. Says the Gemara, I don't understand. It's very nice that you're learning it from a comparison, some similarity in the b'risa, but you need a posuk to make alav. Bishleim no, we're talking about the is of eating korm pesach no. Ksiv, it says in the posuk, al toichlu mimenu no. Elot tzli minolon, where do you have alav in the Torah that says that you're not allowed to, that if you eat tzli in the day, you're chayv. Says the Gemara Dechsiv, it says in the Posuk, V'ochlu es abosor balay lo azeh, tzli eish. And uh, the Posuk, tzli eish, umatsu yisal mororim yoichluhu. So from there you see, balay lo in, 
that from the fact that the Torah says you have to eat the, the Korban Pesach roasted at night, we see that by night, yes, but not in the day. Asks the Gemara, Hai lav habo michlal asehu. That's not a lav. A lav means don't do. This is not an instruction don't do. This is an instruction what you should do. Eat it in the night when it's sleep. And just we can deduce from that say we know what not to do and when not to do. That's called a lav habo michlal asehu. It's, it's something we know not to do, but that's deduced from an asay. That's an assay, that's not a lav. How can you get malchus for that? The status of a lav is similar to an assay, and there's no malchus for that. You're not going to be chayev. This b'risa is following the opinion of Rabbi Huda. The Rabbi Huda says that this posuk actually contains a lav. Well, we can't see a lav. It doesn't say anywhere loy. It doesn't say anything. Doesn't say anywhere what not to do. It just says what you should do. The Tanya we learned in a brisa. Shoir vase. The pasuk says if you have a a, a bull vase or a sheep sarua that one of its organs is larger than another. For example, one of his eyes is larger than the other eye. The kolut or if its hooves are are not split. You're allowed to make it hectish for the base of Migdosh as an adover, which means that its money can be used for the up, for upholding the Bedekabais, the base of Migdosh. But you should not make it, you're not allowed to make it into a korban to be put onto the Mizbeach. And so what do we learn from there? That Nudovo Tase Oisoi, Oisoi Ato Matfis Lebede Kabais. You learn from there that only, since the, there's an assay that says you're allowed to make such an animal, which is Sarua Vakolot, you're allowed to make it a Nudovo, which means you're allowed to make it Hegde Shubede Kabais. That so when from the, you see from there that only this type of animal you're allowed to make hegda shubede kabayis ve'iato matfis t'mimim. But in the event that it's an unblemished animal where there's nothing wrong with the animal, you're not allowed to make it hegda shubede kabayis. You're only ever allowed to make it hegda for a carbon. Mikan omru. And from here it says we see says the brayser that kol matfis t'mimim lebede kabayis over baasei. That if somebody is going to make a tmimim, an animal that's not got these blemishes, and is going to make them into a nadova, into bedekabayis, into, into something that's hektush, that's only going to be used, that the money can be used for the uphold of the base of Migdosh, not for a korban itself, he's transgressed this assay. What's that say? The assay is that make blemished animals, a sarua vakolot, make that nadova. How do you know that if you make another animal, a, an unblemished animal, and you make it hektish for bedek abayis and a dover, how do we know that you actually have a lav as well? Talmud Leima, it says in the Posuk, and this is a Posuk, a few Psukim earlier, it says, a very, very common Posuk. And what do we see from the word Leimoyer? Rabbi Huda says that whenever a parasha starts with Leimoyer, then whatever is in that parasha, even if it's an Asay, or a Lav Habo Michlal Asay, then that Lav Habo Michlal Asay has the status of a Lois Asay. And over here also, by Korban Pesach, it says in the Posuk, Vayoyim HaRashem El Moshe Vel Aroin Leimoyer, from the fact that it says Leimoyer, there's a new concept. Lav habo michlal Leimoyer. So Rashi's got an interesting term. Lav habo michlal Leimoyer. If it says Leimoyer, a lav in that parasha is actually considered a lav, even if it's not an explicit lav, it's a lav habo michlal assay. It's a lav that's only deduced from an assay. And therefore, coming back to, to our Gemara here, if somebody eats a korban pesach that's roasted on the day of the 14th, even though it's a lav abo michlala say, because it only says in the posse, you should eat the korban pesach tzli in the night, since it says leimur, it turns it into a lav. And the Gemara is going to explain. Omalei Rebbe le bar kapora. My mashma, Rebbe said to bar kapora, where do you see in the word leimur that something become, that it becomes a lav? Omalei dechsiv leimur. Since it says leimur, the word leimur can be broken up into Loi nemar bidvarim, that the things, the, the halochas that are learned in this parasha are in the category of loi, which means a lav. Be rav omri. 
In the base Medrash of Rav, they explained it a little bit different, that Lemur means love and Moir. You're telling them a love. So either however you, you learn it, whether you learn it like, whether you're learning it like Bar Kapora, or like Beirav, from the word Lamer, you see that the Isurim that are learned from the parasha, even though it's a lava bo say, we learn that they have the status of a lav, and you can get Malchus for them. Continues the Gemara. May Tashmisha Shal Nachtoim, we saw in the Mishnah that the water that was used to cool down the hands of the bakers, they could become chomets and they have to be spilt out. Says the Gemara Tani Chod in one brayso we learned Shevchin b'Moki Madrin you should spill it in an inclined surface so it should roll away and it shouldn't it shouldn't gather. Ve'in Shevchin b'Moki Mash Boiron but in a flat uneven surface you should not pour it because it's going to get it's going to collect there and if the water collects there it will become chometz. Ve'Tani Idoch in another brayso we learned Shevchin b'Moki Mash Boiron you can even pour this water into a place which is uneven a level but uneven place and and even though the water is going is not go, is not going to roll away. It's going to become chomets. We have a contradiction in the braces. Says the Gemara Loi Kashi, it's not a contradiction. Hard in a fisha, when we're talking about that you have a lot of such water, the kovu, when you're going to spill it on this ashboiren, then it's going to be collected. The water is going to be collected because it's not so even. And if it's going to, the water is going to collect itself, it's going to become chomets. Hard the loin of fishy, but the braiser that says you can, are allowed to pour it in a place of ashboiren is where there's not a lot of water. The loin kovu, that even if you spill it in this area, the water is not actually going to collect. It's just going to move away and get absorbed and it's not going to collect and therefore it will not become chomets. Continues the Gemara. Another halacha omer of Yehuda, isha loi talush, a woman should not need the dough of the matzus. Now, this is what Rav Yehuda said. He was giving a drasha, and he said that it has to be mayim, which is lonu, which means it has to have slept overnight. Because typically in this time of the year, the Nisan time of the year, the spring waters are not so cold, and we don't want to make the matzus with warm water as we've seen previously. And therefore, wait overnight, let the water cool down, and then use it. Dorosha Rav Masna Bupupanya. Rav Masna, in the place of Pupanya, said this drasha, and he was saying the drasha in Loshan HaKodesh. In Loshan HaKodesh, the word Lonu, what does it mean? It means our water. And he said this drasha, that, that the woman should not need the matzahs only with our water. Lemachor, Aisu Kule Alma. The next day, all the people of Papunya came and Aisu Alm Kule Alma Chatzvayu, they brought their pitches. They came to Rav Masna and said, Rabbi, you said in the Drasha in the Shul yesterday that we can only use Maim Shalonu, our water. We're coming to take your water. Omrule, they so, so they said to them, No, it's the Omrule Havlon Maya. So, the, and these people said to Rav Masna, Give us water. Omar Lur Rav Masna said to these people, I used the word lonu, but that was in Loshna Kodesh. And I didn't mean lonu as in ours. I meant shelonu ano b'mayo debisu omri. What I meant was lonu, that they slept, which is also a term of lino. It slept overnight, which in Targum, in the language you people in Papunya understand better, it's debisu. They slept. We need waters that slept overnight and not our water because there's no value in taking the rabbi's water. There's no particular water that you have to take his water. And that was the mistake they made in Papunya. And it's amazing their Munas Chachomim they had. It's, the Rav says a halacha, they didn't understand it, didn't make sense, and they still came and said, if that's what the Rav says, that's what we do. The Avnenezer brings from here a tremendous lesson in their Munas Chachomim. Continues the Gemara, Dorash Rava, Isha loitolosh bechama, a woman should not need the matzus in whilst in the sun because the sun is going to heat up the dough and it will become chomets quicker. Nor should one use water that's been heated in the sun and even more so not with water that's been actually cooked on fire, on a flame. A mulayr was this big copper vessel that used to be hanging over the fireplace and even if the fire was not on and it was not hot but since the copper would contain the heat the water that would collect that would be drained at the bottom of this mulayr would always be somewhat warm it would not be cold water and therefore one should not use this water for kneading the matzahs. 
She should not, whilst preparing the matzahs for baking, she should not leave them alone. She should just constantly be working on the matzahs until she's finished baking all the matzahs. And she should have two different vessels of cold water next to her. We know that sometimes they used to take some water and sprinkle it over the matzahs while they were preparing the matzahs. She should take one bowl of water where she's taking water from there to sprinkle on the matzahs. And a different bowl where she cools down her hands. We mentioned this before, that the bakers would cool down their hands and and since the, the water that she's using to cool down the hands would typically is getting warmed up by her hands, and therefore the ones should not use that water, which is not cold, to sprinkle on top of the matzahs. What happens if a woman made matzahs with warm water? She wasn't allowed to. It makes the matzahs become chomets quicker. She made sure it didn't become chomets, or we can see it didn't become chomets. Marzutra or Marmutar. Marzutra says, okay, if it didn't become Chomets, she did something wrong, but the Matzahs are Mutar. Ravashi or Maasa, Ravashi said, no, since she was not allowed to use this water, she used this water, the Matzahs are Asa. Omar Marzutra. Minoa Minolor. Ravzutra says, I'll bring you proof to what I'm saying that you're allowed to use the Matzahs even though she did something she wasn't allowed to do. Diltani, we learned in a Brisa. We saw this on Daf Memo Medalef. Ein loisasina sa'irin bepesach. One's not allowed to soak the grains of barley on Pesach, the imlosses, if you did soak them, nizbaku, if the grains became split because they became soaked and bloated with the, uh, they blown up with the water, asurim, then they're also. Loi nizbaku, mutarin. But if they did not start cracking, then it's muta. So what do you see from there? Even though the haloch is ein loises and you're not allowed to do that, if you did it, nonetheless, it's mutarin, providing they didn't start cracking. But if they didn't start cracking, even though they did something wrong, it was mutar. Says Mazutra, the same will apply here. She wasn't allowed to use warm water, but if she used it, and it's not chomets, it's mutar. Ravashi, Omar Ravashi says, Otu kulhu, are all the isurim durabonon, chada mechita machtinu, were they all woven with a single weave? They're all the same? Heichud itmar, itmar, where it says explicitly that even though they did something wrong, we don't give them a knas, we don't give them a penalty, and we allow them to use it, as in the case of soaking the grains of barley, that's where they said it. Heichud itmar, but in the case where they use the warm water, and it doesn't say explicitly that if they use the warm water, you're allowed to eat the matzahs, lo itmar, in that case it doesn't say it, and it could well be you're not allowed to use them, and Ravashi says you're not allowed to use those matzahs. And Rashi points out that we've seen previously that you're allowed to eat matzah on Pesach that was made of the, of the, that was dough that was bought from the goyim, b'tzeiko yisrael nochrim. And they have no halachas on how to do the kneading. They knead however they want. We can see it's not chomets. But in the same way as it's muta to, to make matzah from bread that was kneaded, from dough that was kneaded by the goyim, why should it be different here? So Rashi asks that and says, they were goyim, they didn't do any isurim, they didn't do an avera. And therefore, we are allowed, if it's not chomets, you can use it. However, here, this person has the halacha, don't need the matzahs with warm water, and you did. And therefore, Ravashi says, it's osa. Hadron aloch kol shah. B'seyat adishmai, we finished learning perak kol shah. Mirat Hashem will do chazor on perak kol shah. And in the next year, we're going to start the next perak, perak ve'elu oivrin.